Hello everyone, I am at my friend Michelle's house here in Central Florida, just outside of Orlando. And I met her about five years ago when she started to come to my beginner gardening classes. I'm here at her place five years later and I am just so joyous with seeing what's here, so hopeful for what can be done. And so we came up with the idea of giving you a tour uh, of this place so you can see what you can do with your place. So I hadn't really gardened at all. We moved from Wisconsin to Florida in 2013 and I tried a few things up north and failed miserably. All of our gardens failed and when I moved down here I just started slowly learning about all the food that you could grow and this growing season is year round. So that's why I'm so excited to show you this place because hearing that and seeing what she's done here I'm like a little bit blown away and I think you will be too. So let's start at the first bed you created. Yeah. So this was the first bed we created and this was after I spent time with Robin. We created a whole front yard garden and I was uh, working laying the cardboard. We went and dumpster dived for cardboard so that was my first dumpster diving. We got the cardboard, we laid it down and then you had mulch there and we started laying the mulch and I'm like this is it. This is all you have to do. So I remember coming home and immediately telling my husband I know what we're gonna do. <laughs> So, and you said that you have brought in how many loads of mulch? It's well over a hundred truckloads. A hundred truckloads of mulch. And you can see like, how raised up we are, right? Yep. So, why do you put the mulch down? I put the mulch down, I've learned from Robin, uh, moisture. So the number one problem in Florida gardening anything is the sun is beating down on the soil, kind of killing it. And if you can put that nice mulch layer, it keeps the moisture in and the plants are just happier. So Michelle was telling me, and I didn't even know this part, but this is an HOA, right? Yeah, we do. We have an HOA. And so, so many people say like you can't possibly grow food in an HOA. We're standing in the front yard in an HOA. Tell us what this is. This is Katuk. I love Katuk. Um, it's a wonderful green. It tastes a lot like peas, I think. Mm. We are have really built this as a little bit of a privacy hedge from the front. So, so this is an edible yes. privacy hedge. Yes. That was really one of the main goals of, of our gardens here because we have an HOA. I wanted everything to just look like landscaping. So I've included a lot of flowers and you'll see pollinator flowers. So we want to be honest that this HOA is not the strictest of all HOAs. Right. But it is indeed an HOA, and this is a hedge of food in the front yard. More katuk than you could ever eat. And right now, I don't know if you can see, but I'm almost like kind of bouncing because there's so much mulch here that it's built like this sponge that just sucks up all the rain and builds all this soil. So I did these raised beds because this is our best sun. We have a lot of trees. So watching this property, I really spent the first couple years here before we did much, really just watching where the sun is throughout different times of the year. And I really found out that up front here was my best sun. So the trees in Florida can definitely be a challenge, but she has made it work with the big oaks on site. And one of the biggest lessons to follow is observe the land, learn from the land. You sound like a very wise master of the plants, having listened to the land and found out where things work. This side yard is, I, I've never seen anything quite like it. Um, you can see how high the mulch is here. What have we got? Like, that's about a foot of mulch or something like that, probably. Um, actually, let's pull this. Oh yeah, oh yeah, look at that. You can see all of this, um, the mycorrhizal fungi growing in here. And that is all breaking down this uh, mulch, all this wood, and turning it into soil. And it's, it's moist in here, almost moist enough to, not enough for drops to come out, but like you're holding on to a lot of moisture there. So all the rain that's fallen down 
Michelle is trapping right here on site. So we have a mulberry growing right here along the sidewalk. I see these little logs. Tell me about your inspiration with this mulberry. Uh, mulberry tree, so we have neighbors, neighbor kids, and it's one of the most magical things when we're sitting out back and we hear children running through the paths and picking mulberries. Really one of their daily walks where they come and they walk the whole neighborhood, but they walk through our garden and eat mulberries. So anybody can come here and eat these mulberries. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice. And how old is this tree? Three years, I would estimate. I think it's three years old. Right here we're on this giant hedge mm -hmm. of katuk, a food that can be considered a superfood. And so I'd love to hear about how you ended up hearing about my first class mm -hmm. and some of what you learned from it. Yes, I, I believe I followed you on Facebook and I must have seen an event to come out and help at your front yard garden at Sarah's. So that's when I first met you. And then your Central Florida guide that you created, that was very helpful in just getting started and knowing what works well, where to go, who to ask, and then also the Orlando Permaculture Club. Mm, that yeah. is a wealth of knowledge. Yes, Orlando yes. Permaculture is basically like one of the main reasons I ended up moving to Orlando to do my year of growing and foraging all my food. So you learned the things in class mm -hmm. and then you went home mm -hmm. and you did the things. I did the things. <laughs> yeah, really seeing that front yard garden that you did, seeing how easy it was to, you don't even have to rip up the grass, lay the cardboard down, put the mulch on top and it's going to create soil and you can see how quickly it creates the soil. A lot of the plants that are thriving are the plants that are easy to grow and produce a lot of food. Yes. Have you been focusing on some of those plants? Yeah, definitely focusing on things that I like to eat, that our family likes to eat, and then that are the easiest and need the least amount of care. Sweet potatoes are definitely easy. one of those yeah, here in yeah. Florida. It has inspired neighbors. We do have neighbors that are planting things that weren't planting things before. Nice. So I just was so excited to share this example with all of you because I don't know if we really captured how much food there is here, but like Michelle said, they're eating from the garden every single day and positively impacting members of the community, spreading the abundance and enjoying it and loving it. And having right? fun. Like this is fun. And it's something that my husband and I do together. We really enjoy gardening together. So yeah, I wanted to share that with you because you can do this too. Here in Florida, a lot of people think you can't grow food, which is just hard to imagine that that's a narrative that's out there but you absolutely can you can see Michelle's example of you know a handful of years ago not knowing how to do it having moved from Wisconsin and her producing a lot of abundance and one thing that I want to mention is we have just started a program called the food forest starter bundle and we will actually mail you a bundle of 30 of the easiest to grow foods from cutting and seed. A lot of the plants that we've gone through today, so if you are getting started and you want to plant a food forest or a survival garden, uh, you can get the food forest bundle from us. So thank you so much for having all these people and of course me. Yes, thank you. Thank you.